prosthetics in the legs. Ethor is a pioneer in robotics, and specifically the intersection of robotics and medicine. So he's actually been part of the founding team of three companies that have gone public around this. And when Ethor is not working, he is trying to heli-ski, which is nearly impossible because he's also chasing around five-year-old twins. And so we all know what his life is. He's just basically keeping everyone alive and, and falling off things. Um, so anyway, welcome Ethor Bender. Hi, um, so I want to be here, to be here. Um, amazing uh, presentations and uh, so much going on in this field. I'm going to talk here today about uh, Unique, and uh, but let's um, start a little bit with uh, kind of the background, um, how we got to this. Um, my field of expertise, or I've had the privilege of working with many teams uh, around the world. Uh, in this field of, uh, uh, some people call it bionics or robotics, um, prosthetics, orthotics, uh, taking people uh, running into the Olympic Games um, and uh, exoskeletons uh, on states of TED and uh, that help uh, people to walk out of wheelchairs and uh, robotic limbs um, that are now today uh, reimbursed by Medicare and uh, these exoskeletons, by the way, are now FDA approved. And uh, also orthotic uh, devices for osteoarthritis and, and so on. So it's been a really fun and, um, and uh, inspiring journey. But uh, there's still a lot to be done. Uh, we're not quite done, uh, finished here. And uh, we, this is the challenge. There's a lot of people out there that uh, need assistive uh, devices for various reasons. Uh, this is just the numbers from, from US in, in millions. Uh, osteoarthritis, um, ACL injuries, scoliosis, uh, and so on. And, uh, and although you saw the paralyzed people, we are getting them to walk, it's still very expensive and it's still very cumbersome. Um, so um, I'd like to kind of take us now specifically into prosthetics, and, um, and we are embarking here on a new journey. Um, and we are starting with that in prosthetics, which will then expand into other fields. And um, we look at a little bit at prosthetics in particular. Uh, it used to, it's been amazing advancements, uh, going all the way from very primitive uh, solutions over to, uh, actually became quite a craft craftsmanship here uh, 100 years ago. Uh, amazing work being done uh, with wood and metal, uh, and now uh, they look more like sticks. But this is more like it was in the in the, in the good old days. And uh, we um, saw some amazing work with uh, different types of materials. And uh, but this kind of disappeared uh, in the World War uh, One and World War Two, where suddenly we had a lot of amputees. And we had to become very efficient at what we are doing. And uh, so we created uh, modular uh, systems that uh, helped us to uh, make a lot of legs. Uh, but they were actually more like sticks, very industrial looking. The evolution uh, uh, has taken place. I mean, a lot of exciting materials, carbon fiber, silicon, and so on. And lately, electronics, uh, sensors, batteries, <coughs> motors, and so on have taken over. and. Uh, and this is pretty much uh, what you, you get today. It's bionic legs, uh, electronic, but uh, it is, uh, they're still very industrial. And uh, in many ways, uh, yes, we are not making wooden sticks anymore. No, we are actually uh, making bionic sticks. They look more like sticks and uh, not really like uh, real legs. And uh, people try various methods to make it look really real like and uh, and it's usually a, a really sad <laughs> uh, result, and, uh, and it's not very um, uh, giving even for the people who work on it. As you can see here, this is kind of the typical way of creating cosmetic covers. And um, if you look at the psychological impact, it's interesting that uh, there have been done lately now. We are looking more and more into this area. There are studies being made um, about the psychological impact of look where you wear something like this, like a leg, uh, artificial leg, or also how satisfied people are with that. And of course, there is a correlation between uh, 
uh, just uh, self-image, uh, depression, and so on that comes with losing a leg, and the look of it. So, and then that leads to all kind of other complications and and cost for the insurance companies as well. Um, and then uh, satisfaction. I mean, here we are looking at 64% of all amputees pretty much not being happy with what they wear or kind of neutral about it. And how sad is that? Because it's something that you wear for the rest of your life. I mean, this is not something temporary. This is actually something that you have to wear, like a eye eyewear. And talking about eyewear and other medical devices and what has been achieved in those fields, I mean, yes, you go out and you pick a nice glasses and uh, that's what you wear. It's individual and uh, stylish and even uh, hearing devices. You can get them uh, really nice and obviously custom made, 3D printed and 95% uh, actually of hearing devices are 3D printed today. Um, and the experience is just the consumer experience. Uh, Warburg Parker is a great example of that. Um, so, and this is all taken for granted today, but certainly not in prosthetics, but we like to change that, and here, here we go. Um, so that brings me to uh, Unique. Unique is a company that uh, is, uh, you know, it's not an experiment, it's, it's, a, it's a real, real deal here, where we are all about the fact that we are all unique, and um, we are taking basically sticks um, whether they are bionic sticks or, or, or something less complicated, and making them look good. Um, and <clears throat> we are a team uh, that is uh, situated in San Francisco and in Spain. Uh, we have designers, uh, most of our designers sit in Spain and in Seville, and they are very happy to have job there, the 36% unemployment. And, uh, and so, uh, so we have created a really nice studio there, and then we... Uh, uh, have one here as well in San Francisco. We print everything in, in, in Seville. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our, our process. So, uh, so this is the way it's done today, uh, pretty much around the world. I mean, as I said before, and uh, most of these clinicians, they are they have master degrees. I mean, they're highly educated. Uh, think about it, having to do a work like this. Um, and um, this is a user. Actually, if we can get the sound up. Can you please turn up the sound? There's no input. Maybe. Yeah. What, I, what he basically said <laughs> was that uh, uh, the experience for users is that they just go to clinics and they just pretty much get what the prosthetist uh, recommends them. That is pretty much how, how it is. And that's the experience. There's no choice. There is, there is nothing like an online experience where you browse through different legs or whatever. So, um, so we like to change that. And so we introduced um, um, a process which really starts with design and leads you all the way into 3D printed uh, legs. And I will take this step by step. So the way it starts, it really starts with design. It starts with some creativity. They, uh, people have a chance, they, they go online or they can go to a clinic. This is the online experience. They go to our website, and there they can choose between all kinds of different uh, legs. And, uh, and this is just a uh, few of them. And uh, we rank them where it's men, women, kids. And uh, so it's certainly exciting. They can see the prices, which they're very surprised usually about. <laughs> and, um, and they are affordable. Um, we also offer this through clinics around the world, so people can go into uh, 200 clinics momentarily. We will probably be to about 1,000 clinics uh, all around the world where people can go. And the idea is then eventually to have printers there as well. So people can even get uh, shipping costs and escape custom uh, that way. So in those clinics, they, they, they find uh, uh, catalogs, just like you shop for clothes or whatever. and. Uh, we have demo samples that they can look at and feel and see. And I will show you a little bit afterwards how it is live. Um, they can expect that uh, these legs are symmetrical. So they are absolutely in the same shape as the sound leg. Uh, sometimes they get quite shocked <laughs> when they see actually how big it is. But uh, 
uh, but it's completely uh, symmetrical. And, uh, and obviously, we have a lot of different shapes of legs. What people are very adamant about, they want it to be snug, obviously, under pants and so on, like you see here on the right side. And so uh, before, it all kind of bulked in a little bit, because when you just have a stick, uh, it doesn't look like you have anything under your pants. And it's always a kind of weird. And we can work with pretty much any legs out there. And, um, and so the way <coughs> it works uh, it is photogrammetry. Uh, we uh, work here with Autodesk, uh, simply using photos, uh, normal cameras, eight photos, seven measurements, if you're above knee amputee. And um, <coughs> normal cameras, uh, tape measurement, pen, and, and then we use uh, uploading software to upload the, 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 the pictures. We then take the pictures and then put it into one to three decats from Autodesk and, um, or Memento also in, in the future. We're working on that. Um, so the, the way it works is uh, these are the four photos. They take off uh, uh, the sound leg because we wanted to mimic the sound leg. There are four photos taking off uh, the prosthetic leg. Um, and then there are these measurements that they take. And they can do this in their own homes, and they do it. Or they go to the prosthetist, and the prosthetist does it. Um, prosthetic leg, two measurements here, so all together seven now. So with this information uploaded, we take it, and we, like I said, upload it into Autodesk, and, um, and work then on the file. And um, this is the team of Autodesk, which is collaborating with us on Memento, and. Uh, uh, on the Memento project. Uh, this is uh, Tatiana here sitting in, in uh, I think, Singapore, working with a team in Seville. And um, so we are continually working on improving this process, making it even more simple. And then we print it. And these are our, our printers. Uh, they are sitting in, uh, uh, in Seville. And uh, so we, um, we currently have six printers. We are adding 10 more. And uh, we cannot keep up with demand. I mean, it's, uh, we are way behind. <laughs> and uh, so people are excited. Um, <coughs> and then we move over to the painting process, uh, packaging and shipping. And um, so this is how, how you see it look, look like. It's um, uh, ABS material. and. Uh, um, and currently we are working on, it has currently screws attached to together, but we are working now on having magnets, so people can easily take it apart, put on different designs, and so on. And then it's the fitting and, and, and sharing, posting in, uh, in fa on Facebook and, uh, and, and so on. This can be done in the practices of the, the, the clinics or in their homes. They can just be sent it to people's homes and uh, they put it on. And, uh, and so on. So, uh, so that's the process, and, uh, and the result is uh, we have people now all around the world. Um, the company started, actually, we are one year old this week, <laughs> and we have already hundreds of people around the world that uh, are walking around with it, even at um, New York Fashion Week uh, in October last year. Uh, the first uh, male amputee ever to step on the catwalk uh, walked with our ferry. Yeah. So uh, been a nice, nice press about this in the in the fashion industry because they think this is a, something interesting, and um, and people telling their stories um, where they say like Tarol here, I don't want it real. I, I want something special. He loves comic books, so he wanted the Iron Man look. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, I mean he is. Uh, an amputee, I don't know if you've seen the Microsoft uh, ad with the amputee now on uh, television. He's the one in that uh, uh, TV ad, and uh, he, he had his uh, repainted, so it fits now his uh, Hummer. He has a Hummer in the same color. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and then James here, I mean, he was a little bit reluctant in the beginning, but he said, I can never go back again. Um, and that's what we hear. There is no way back after you, you put it on. Uh, she wanted something fancy, Diane here, uh, didn't want to hide it, and that's what we hear more and more. And here is Deborah on NPR. Before that, I would just cover up 
and pretend I wasn't an amputee and didn't want anyone to know. And then I just wanted to show, show my leg off because it was just so amazing looking. So I think it's sort of therapy. It definitely was for me. She's wearing here actually uh, one from uh, 3D, uh, 3D Systems, but she is uh, getting ours now. Uh, in, uh, in two weeks, uh, she's getting a new one. Um, and Kelly, uh, same thing, it's about stigma. You're changing stigma. Uh, people look at me in a positive way uh, now. They, so, <clears throat> yeah, it's social awareness. Um, it's uh, advancements in 3D system, in, in 3D printing that are helping us here. Um, consumers are much more involved in health healthcare, obviously. And, um, and so on. So I think I've kind of gone through this slide indirectly. What is nice about this is that it is covered by uh, reimbursement by insurance companies. And uh, it's been a struggle in the beginning because it's uh, actually reimbursed because it's a protection. Um, and in the beginning, these covers were expensive. So it really didn't matter. It used to cost $6,000. Now we are down to $495. Medicare covers it between 695 and 1,100. So this is uh, now covered, and uh, covers are covered. <laughs> and um, so next step for us is uh, to expand further, to take uh, covers over to orthotics uh, and, 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 and so on, uh, because as I showed you before, the numbers are big, and there's a lot of need out there for something better. Great example of that are these uh, scoliosis braces that uh, young women primarily need to wear for years uh, when they are you know, 16, 17, 18 years old. And uh, the idea is to change that into something much more uh, snug, uh, better looking, and uh, fitting. So uh, with that said, I'd like to bring on stage here. Uh, uh, Catherine Crawford, who, uh, or Kat, and she is one of our spokespersons. And user. So, uh, thanks, Kat, for joining us. Yeah, thank you for having me. Can you maybe start by telling him a little bit your story? I joined the United States military in 2008, and unfortunately, as a consolation prize. <laughs> I was honorably medically discharged in 2011, and when I was offered a prosthetic device, it was absolutely god-awful. Just like he said, it was like a metal stick. And when he gave it to me, he gave me this god-awful, bondoed, carbon fiber thing that had skin-colored paint on it. Didn't even match me. I, w I felt awful wearing it. And then his next option was, here's a silicone sleeve that looks like fake skin. Looked worse than anything I'd ever seen. Even when this leg looked really bad when I still had it, it looked even worse than that. It was awful. It looked cumbersome, dirty, dingy, looked like I wouldn't be able to maintain it. And it felt like I was going to be hiding. That's not something I wanted to do. I was an amputee. I lost my leg. And I didn't want to go around pretending that that had never happened. Because it's like lying to yourself, you know? And not only is, is that lying to yourself, you're lying to everybody else. That's not who I am now. And so for the longest time, I struggled. What am I going to do? And finally, Unique got a hold of me. And they said, hey, what would you do if you had something that you could wear, you could take on, take off, over your prosthetic device? It would give you symmetry, it would make you feel whole again, but you wouldn't have to feel like you're hiding from anybody. And I was like, ding, 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 we have a winner. <laughs> and I immediately jumped on board. I was so happy with it. And I can't tell you, I mean, I have two other fairings. I have one that is the Kerbin Gold, and I have another one that looks like a very carefully polished wood. And every single one of them, I wear them both with long pants and cover them. People hardly ever see them during the day. But I'll walk down the streets and people have no idea that I have this prosthetic device or this cover. And then they'll see me quickly fix it or tie my shoes, and they'll see that little hint of the design. And, and it's this really creative way of breaking the ice with people. So instead of getting those questions of, hey, what happened? Did that hurt? I get, that is a beautiful, wonderful thing. Is it a brace? Is it a sleeve? Is it a piece of jewelry? It's something that helps me feel more of a normal person and not as a disabled person. 
Because I feel like disabled is really a horrible statement to make. We all have differences. And just like the moniker, we're all unique. And we need to be represented as our own selves. We need to be individualized. And this company enables that. That's fantastic. I feel wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Thanks so much. <laughs> That's us. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>